Paul Fretschner and Adam Baum checking in here ahead of the Xavier Managers taking on the Marquette Managers. Now, for those of you who don't know what you're about to watch, this is a tradition that's become more and more popular year over year. The night before a game, the home managers and the visiting managers get together at the home team's facility and they play each other. It's just a good way to have some camaraderie, some friendship, and uh, also some competition here before the game. Yeah, and it's it's ultimately a, it's about basketball. You know, everyone who's a manager on Marquette, Xavier, or any program in the country, they do it because they love the game, and this is their chance to play. This is something since I've been involved with Xavier's program, I've liked to come and watch these games and see these guys have their moments, and it's going to be fun to get to watch them do this and document it tonight. We've had some of the Xavier managers on the Sean Miller podcast already this season. You can go back and watch that episode in full. Sean Miller, the head coach of the Xavier Musketeers, sitting down with some of the senior managers to talk to them about their daily routines. But they call them the backbone of the Xavier program because the program doesn't really exist without these guys being able to go day to day and take care of all the things that they have to take care of behind the scenes. Yeah, I love these guys. I've gotten to know them really well in my years with the program. And it's so cool to to watch everything that they do, everything they have a hand in, and ultimately it it represents what you see on the floor. Like you turn on a game, you show up at Centos, and you sit in your seat and you watch 40 minutes of basketball. Well, it's possible because of what these guys do day in and day out. So enjoy now the Xavier managers taking on the Marquette managers the night before Xavier and Marquette play on senior night at Centos Center. inside the Cleek Camp Family Training Center here on the campus of Xavier University, the newest practice facility for the Musketeers. Paul Fritschner alongside Adam Baum as we get set to broadcast this manager's game between the Marquette managers and the Xavier managers. Adam, I'm not sure there has been a broadcast of a manager's game before, but if there hasn't, we're trailblazers and it's good to be with you. I'll likely take credit for, for being the first, Paul. And <laughs> I've watched these manager games before. They're highly entertaining, and it's great to see them get a moment like this. Marquette managers going from right to left as you watch this. The Xavier managers wearing those gray T-shirts. They will be going from left to right on your screen here in the Cleek Camp Family Training Center. A miss, and now let's meet the Marquette managers. Caden LeCaptain, senior, Preble High School. Ryan McMullen, Franklin, Massachusetts. Owen DiSabatino, Sandberg Middle School. Jack Lynch, Bishop O'Dowd High School. James Francis, and I saw my office. Marquette looking to break open the scoring here. Offensive rebound, the putback, and it is the Marquette managers on the board first. Now let's meet the Xavier managers. Andrew Brown, guard, Oneida High School. Andrew Seo, AKA Tank, professional rebounder, Tucson, Arizona. Hi, I'm Avery Brozar, I'm from Liberty Township, Ohio. I'm a junior. Uh, my name is Matthew DeSimone. I'm a freshman and I'm from LaGrange, Illinois. Paxton, hand down, man down, Wong. Senior, Boston, Massachusetts. I'm Gray, sixth man of the year, Hoffman. I'm from Barrington, Illinois. Michael Witt, Cincinnati, Ohio. Max Meyer, not a bad shot in my book, Cincinnati, Ohio. Matt Lally, junior, Cleveland, Ohio. Miles Kaminsky, junior, LaGrange, Illinois. Isaac Feely, part-time juggler, full-time hooper from Meadville, Pennsylvania. Isaac Feely, the last manager you meet there on those intros, Adam, uh, he gets the start today as senior. Yeah, unprecedented, honestly. I think it has something to do with this being senior night for the managers, but Isaac is so deserving. So this game happening the night before the Xavier and Marquette game at the Cintas Center, the final game of the regular season in 2023-2024 for both of these teams. But Marquette and Xavier here. Golden Eagles out to an early lead. Some strong rebounding from both teams. Very strong. And that's going to be a point of emphasis all night long for the Xavier Musketeers. Is you have got to block out. You cannot allow Marquette second chance opportunities. Great take to the bucket there, splitting through the defense and Ask him for the screen, use it. Get right to the rack. 
One of the things that we should mention here is Matt Lally a little off the mark with that three. The way these games work, you'll see it kind of like hockey substitutions. Guys coming in and out. There are no officials in this game. There's no referees. Everybody officiates themselves. It's the honor system, Paul. It is the honor system. So you'll see guys check in and out at a dead ball. Ball's inbounded pretty quickly after a ball would go out of bounds, anything like that. It's a running clock as well. Only time the clock stops is at halftime, and then I think a couple of times they'll check the ball up. But other than that, those are the ground rules here. Michael Witt. The lid's off for the Musketeers. Slow start, but if I know anything about these Xavier managers, they're a resilient bunch. Good take. Now, what I love here about Max Meyer, I call him the marathon man, Mad Max. He's got unlimited pace. He does not come off the floor. And he's the pace car for Xavier. He's going to get out and run all day. Strong defensive effort down there in the post for Marquette. They're looking to push again, trying to get that lead to double digits. It's off the mark. And again, a rebound from Xavier. But here's Meyer. You talk about for Xavier on their actual team, try to push with pace. And you see Meyer there doing it in transition. Look at this. And what I'll tell you about Max, he's a green dot ball. That means... Do not let him shoot it on the perimeter. Xavier's got a few guys like that. Paxton Wong in particular, another one. If he has an open look, he's going to fire it. I'd imagine in this game, Meyer has uh, a lot of opportunities from beyond the arc in this game. Paxton Wong tracking down the rebound. Xavier trying to chip away here early. Less than five minutes into the game. Oh, what that advance pass up ahead to Lally. We call that the high-low, Paul, and that's something Xavier looks to exploit. They want to get the ball inside and try to disrupt Marquette's defense. Marquette answering with the three of their own, lead back to five. Catch and shoot, Paul. Got to be that's ready. Pretty. That's pretty. Not a lot you can do with that. Michael Witt at the top of the key. Meyer just hit that three. A minute ago. Musketeers getting into their offense. Meyer firing off the mark. Lally the put back no. And a foul call. We've got Our a foul first call. foul of the game. Yeah, and that's Lally down low, just fighting for extra opportunities, and he's rewarded for it. You know, one of the things that makes these games fun is just the opportunity for the managers to go out there the night before a game. They're the hardest working people in this business. The teams, they don't exist without these managers. They don't operate the same way without these managers, but it's a good way for, uh, for some camaraderie, Adam, before the games get really going. Yeah, and I think the other cool thing is the appreciation from the actual scholarship players on the team. Uh, for Marquette, you've got Tyler Kolick here in attendance watching these guys. For Xavier, you've got Zach Fremantle. You've got a few of the walk-ons and Brad Colbert, um, Michael Wolf. I believe we have an appearance from Davion McKnight at one point, so that they like to come and watch as well. And Bob Nungy's in here somewhere. Somewhere. An elusive man. Elusive, very. Um, the only man to turn down Sean Miller for an invitation <laughs> to appear on his podcast. Over there in that red hoodie on the Xavier bench that you see straight away there. Three ball from the top of the key, and it's a 10-point lead for Marquette. Stretching that lead over the last... Three and a half minutes or so. Some high-level shooting in this game, Paul. I think it's going to be a storyline to follow all night. Wait, give him the shot fake. Down the lane, lay in. And, and that's, that's, that's Matthew D. Simone. I like to call him MDS. He's an absolute assassin in and around the paint. He likes to own that real estate, as he just did. Another wing three for the Golden Eagles, this time off the mark. Here's Paxton Wong. Don't let him get hot, Paul. That's all I'm going to say. For the Xavier managers, this is their second appearance on the Sean Miller podcast. The senior managers for Xavier, you can go back and watch that episode uh, as Michael Witt takes a three and knocks it down from the top of the key. They call him Stone Cold for a reason, Paul. <laughs> Nothing phases Michael Witt. He's an absolute just beast when it comes to video editing, um, records all the practices, cuts up game film. And he's an assassin out there on the court. And that's what I was getting ready to say is it gave us a look 
as to what these guys do individually, what their jobs are, and how they help the team uh, just every day. A strong baseline drive. Marquette still with that seven-point lead. Just gradual. E. Simone again, this Can't. time losing control. Witt, shot fake to the rim. Good unselfish basketball right there by Michael Witt. Matt Lally is the benefactor. Look at this passing. Get a couple looks here. Underneath, Lally finishing, and then from this angle, look at this. Drop it off, young fella. Just athleticism. Pure, unadulterated athleticism. You hit the nail on the head. The shots from beyond the arc falling for both teams here early in this game. Meyer trying to dish underhand. Marquette getting in the way. Advanced pass ahead and a lay-in lead back to double figures for Marquette. And that's the trouble right there with live ball turnovers. A lot of times it doesn't give you a chance to get your defense set. You can't stop the ball, but Miles Kaminsky, the Illinois madman, comes right back down and drills a corner three. Miles Kaminsky and Isaac Feely, a couple of the content creators for the Musketeers. And the thing I like about Miles Kaminsky, he's a glue guy. He does everything you need him to do. He'll lock up on defense. He'll fight for rebounds. He's not afraid to make the extra pass. And if the moment demands it, he'll step into a three-pointer as he just did. There's Mark Gertner, dish over to Kaminsky, trying to create space, use the backboard, and a little too much on it. Both teams making some substitutions here. Skip pass across the way. Drive to the rim and another lay-in. And it leads up to nine. Xavier was making a run there, but Marquette's had an answer almost every time. Here's Mark Gertner off the mark. Meyer, the follow-up three, and that's pure. So pure. And I've been told many times, Paul, basketball is a game of runs. And we're seeing that right now. That's what they say, Adam. That's what they say. That's what they say. Now, one thing we are going to have to get out in front of here is Marquette only travels with five managers. You're going to see some guys playing in this game who are assistant coaches for the Golden Eagles as Max Meyer steps into a three-pointer. Back-to-back threes for Max Meyer, and here come the Musketeers right here's, back in it. Here they come, Paul. But, yeah, to your point, Adam, uh, the teams and the way they travel their managers, not every manager gets to travel on every trip. So sometimes in these games, the, the away team sometimes has to, uh, to piece things together on the roster. And look, I won't sugarcoat it. Xavier has their hands full. A few of the assistant coaches who are playing in this game tonight for Marquette, they have Division I experience, maybe even some professional overseas experience. So Xavier's going to have to be dialed in. They're going to have to be there on the catch. They're going to have to be a connected defensive team to stop them. And Xavier had cut it down to three, but here's a look. Strong take. I believe that coach right there I played in college at Wofford. So you know he's experienced. You know he's not phased by this moment. And, uh, and Xavier's going to have to uh, find a response here. Gray Hoffman in the game. Here's Gertner again. And he just can't get that shot to go. That's a shot he'll take all day, though. Another green dot guy on Xavier's roster. Looking down low. Hoffman there. Skip pass across the way. Kaminsky right on it. And look at this pack line defense from Xavier. You know, they're there on the catch. They're in the gap. They're ready to help if need be. Deep three. Offensive rebounding. That goes out of bounds. Last touch by Marquette. It'll be Xavier basketball again. Oh, and there's a oh, conversation I... here. This is the thing about no officials. A lot of times they have trouble agreeing on who the ball is off of, whether or not there was a foul. And this, this is a clear-cut case where Xavier thought it was their ball. Marquette insists it's their ball. So here we are. We're staying with the Golden Eagles. You know what I will say, though, Adam? It is very nice there's no monitor in this game. No, no monitor. monitor reviews. And look at that. You know, Marquette coughs it right back up, gives it back. He'll never go to the monitor in this game. Kaminsky kicks it outside. Hoffman for three. And Xavier is within two. And Gray Hoffman's a guy, he does not lack confidence. The man will shoot it in a variety of ways. A lot of flair from that guy right there. 
Marquette once had a lead as big as 10 in this game. Seen it dwindle. Now down to a single possession. Hoffman looked like he gave the foul on purpose. Marquette playing through it, the three ball. And Xavier on a rebound. Now they can tie or take the lead. Good hustle there by Avery Brossard. Meyer for the lead, a little short. You got to stop the ball in transition, Paul. Got to get in front. Got to get in front. Bottom line, that would not fly for Sean Miller. We know that. Gertner down the way. Floater with the right hand. Can't get it to go. Less than seven to play here in this first half. And you're thinking, man, this has been a quick first half. Running yeah. Well, there's no stopping this. Air ball there from Marquette. Maybe starting to get a little winded here. You've been 13 minutes up and down the court. Both teams have made a couple of substitutions, but Xavier definitely with the uh, depth advantage in this game. As you and I know, Paul, when, when you get tired and your legs start to go, the first thing that falls, your jump shot. Mm. You know, it's just not there the way it is when you're fresh. How's and your jump shot looking, Baum? It's a work in progress. One thing I know about myself is I'm perpetually determined to get better. Mm. And we've got trading turnovers here, Kaminsky pushing it. Here's Meyer. Oh, that's and big. he has been hot tonight. Again, Xavier within two. And I believe this was a, uh, a call from Marquette's bench that that was, that was a two, not a three. So the score moves from 30 to 26 to 30 to 28. Saying his foot was on the line. Good deflection there by Kaminsky. Mark it down on the whiteboard. Deflection. We love tracking deflections around here. Just about five and a half to go here in the first half. And uh, playing in this gym, Adam, this is one of the newer practice facilities in this conference. And it really is a beautiful look out. The wall that you can't see that the camera is resting on right now, you can kind of see over on the left side of your screen, the back wall of this gym is all windows. And it gives you a great look back into the uh, back side of Xavier's campus, but a beautiful new facility as Meyer off the mark. And honestly, I'm not sure who they hire to clean those windows, but it's gotta be a full-time job because <laughs> there are a lot of them. Hoffman now for three. Off the mark. Patience here, playing with that 30 second shot clock, just like they do in a normal division one game. Physical take down the way, and that's a foul. Gray Hoffman giving up about 60 pounds there, but he holds his ground. And coming up at the half in just about five minutes, we'll have a word from Adam. You're going to have a chance to talk with Xavier forward Zach Fremantle, catch up with him about this game. I know he has some provocative thoughts on what Xavier can do to win this game, so <laughs> that'll be entertaining. We'll also get a word from the final 2%, which is Xavier's NIL collective, so all that coming up at halftime here in just a few. Another turnover for Marquette, and Xavier can tie or take the lead. They have had some chances to tie or take the lead in this game, but still looking to do it for the first time. And that's the guy you want taking that shot. And there it is, Paxton Wong, the senior manager. Xavier up one. You heard it in his intro, hand down, man down. There's no hand up. That means there's a man down right there. Marquette looking to answer. That's off the mark. Battle for the rebound, and who else? It's Max Meyer. And you know, you got to give credit to De Simone. No pass to Witt, but he can't finish. Oh, that's a tough We pill wanted to, to put it on the top 10, Witt. Oh, what a pass, though. Transition defense. Paxton Wong hits a big three, and that look at him hustling back to make a steal. That's all heart, Paul. Ball movement, key today from the Musketeers. 15 on the shot clock. Dribble handoff there. Witt dishing out. Oh, not again. Wong for three. Kaminsky there to clean up the boards. Finds Meyer, wide open three, one dribble. 
And it is good. Xavier out to a four-point edge. Second chance opportunities, Paul. There it is. Miles Kaminsky, big offensive rebound. And what does he do? Instead of taking a contested shot in the paint, he kicks it out to Mad Max Meyer, the marathon man. Max Meyer did qualify for the Boston Marathon. Yeah, Max is uh, he's a crazy person in a great way. Uh, the man will run for days without getting tired. <laughs> I've seen him do it. Kaminsky again, going through traffic. And that'll go out of bounds. Xavier managers calling for the ball. Calling for the ball. Let's we'll see if Marquette uh, obliges here. It looks like Marquette's going to keep possession. Marquette ball, less than two to go now in the first half. Some family in attendance here for Max Meyer as well. So he's playing for something bigger than himself tonight. Not a whole lot of rebounding going here in the last couple minutes. That's Andrew Brown. Brownie, we like to call him, coming down with the board. Marquette going to get back on defense instead of crashing the boards. But here you go in transition at the rim. Yeah, transition defense, a lot like second chance points. It's going to be something that decides this game for Xavier. Wong, a deep three. A little short. And there's the board from Marquette. You're fortunate for a miss there. You can't let a guy just road runner you and get that kind of a look in the paint. Wong thought about the three, so did Meyer. Here's Andrew Brown. Now Meyer for three off the mark. Again for three. Less than a minute to go now in the first half. Saber with a two point lead. And this is why you show up right here, Paul. It's for games like this. Wire to wire <laughs> nail biters. What a spin. Spin to the bucket. What a move. And we're tied with 30 seconds to go. Xavier can hold for basically the final shot here. That's a hard sequence to stop right there. I think, Paul, you can talk about that. I like to throw out a spin move when we're playing one on one, and you've yet to stop it. And yeah, no doubt. That's what I think every time I see you put me in the spin cycle. There's yeah. nothing I can do. I'm a good laundry man. Xavier looking for that final shot. Wit, turn around, no. And the heave at the good buzzer. No. Would have been good if it went. Yep. But that'll do it for the first half. Entertaining, back Hi and forth. Highly entertaining, Paul. A lot of energy there in the first 20 minutes. So now let's take a look at the halftime stats. A lot of threes taken, 42 threes taken between these two teams in the first 20 minutes. Rise and fire, Paul. <laughs> and you know what? I, I think the most telling stat here is Xavier not getting it done from two point. Look at Marquette, 11 for 17. Xavier only five for 15. But Xavier's three point shooting really brought them back in the game. The 22 assists for Xavier in that first half, distributing the ball well, finding the open man. I know some of the shots didn't fall, but you look on the other side, 20 assists, so 42 combined threes, I think I said there in the first half, 42 combined assists in the first half as well. Unselfish basketball, and the number there, four turnovers. Xavier wants to play games with 11 or less, so that's right in their wheelhouse, if they can keep that going in the second half. Now let's send it down to the court. Adam, you gotta go catch up with Xavier's Zach Fremantle. All right, we are here in the Sun Gym in Xavier Cintas Center. It's 34-34. Here with Zach Fremantle. Thoughts on what you just saw in the first half here? Uh, you know, I, I think our boys are doing real well on offense. They need, to, they need to find ways to put together some stops, string them together, get some kills, you know, get some in a row. Uh, my boy Max is taking over right now. He, he, he's kind of on fire. He might already have 20 at the half, but um, yeah, it's been a real entertaining game so far. I've, I've liked what I've seen out of our guys. Now, when you're here watching, are you are you coaching them up during the game? Are you lending some expertise to these guys? I, I try to help in any way I can. You know, you, you'll hear me. Uh, I don't know about on that, but you'll hear me on the uh, on the bench trying to tell them. You know, I'm trying to tell them look for that middle third. You know, we got some high lows. They haven't really found them yet. Uh, Matt Lally, he needs to steal a little bit better. But yeah, we can we can definitely find some uh, some middle third work. Last thing, 
the Xavier managers win this game if they do what in the second half? If they get some stops. They need to get some stops. The offense is not a problem for them boys. They need to get some stops. You hear that? Zach Fremantle preaching defense. You love to see it. You love to hear it. Thank you for joining us, Zach. Thank you for having me. Good luck, man. Thanks, Adam. Always good to hear from Zach Fremantle. And now let's take a break, get a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back to hear from the final 2%. Life as a student here at Xavier, you, you have the best of both worlds. You have this small Jesuit private school with a really intimate campus where I think everybody seems to know each other. You walk into a classroom, the professor knows your name. You obviously know the professor and you, and you know your classmates. However, you're not in a small college town where that's all we have. It's just the opposite. You can access the city in quick five minutes. You have the professional sports scene, the diversity of a huge city over the Rhine. What it's become is just incredible. It, it really is. Some of the, the places that we all can go. And for a student at Xavier too, it just continues to offer the best of both worlds. I, I really believe that's one of our strengths at Xavier. It's an amazing way of getting a great education. The Sean Miller Podcast is proud to partner with Deer Park Roofing, a company that's provided elite service for homes and businesses since 1996 and leads the industry in professionalism, quality, and responsiveness. Whether your needs are residential or commercial, like the outstanding work on the Cintas Center, the home of Xavier Basketball, Deer Park can handle any job and ensure it's done right. Deer Park's motto is protect what's important, and what's important to you is important to Deer Park Roofing. Visit DeerParkRoofing.com a place like Xavier University with the history and tradition on the court, the academic excellence and what this place stands for, where we play for the win, we play for the good shot. You know, it's all about the final score. You have to be yourself. The authentic person who you truly are stands out. I take the mantle of being the head coach at Xavier very seriously. We're supposed to win. Checking in from Covington, Kentucky, outside of Wenzel Whiskey. Paul Fritschner, Adam Baum with you on a Sunday morning. And Adam, we're here because of the Victory Parkway Exchange. It's the name, image, and likeness initiative on behalf of Xavier. And this gives opportunities for fans to come and get some hand-dipped whiskey. That's right, man. Today, the podcast boys become the bourbon boys. We're going to go in there. We're going to sample the goods. And this was actually, we're going to interview Matt Stainbrook. This is a Matt Stainbrook special blend and i think it's pretty cool like you're starting to see all the different ways that xavier fans are trying to be creative trying to to help the program help the student athletes there's a musketeer gear pop up in here and most importantly this is the first one of these that they've done we're going to talk to the organizers talk about the genesis for how this was created and uh there's going to be more of these coming so i think like Today we're going to introduce this to you and then you're going to start to see more and more things like this happen on the Xavier front. Stay tuned. Let's go take a look. Here with Anthony Sinders and John Schroeder helping out with the Victory Parkway Exchange, also with the final 2% NIL initiative at Xavier. And John, I want to start with you and ask you, from your perspective, what's happening here today at Wenzel Whiskey? Yeah, so this is our first initiative at the Victory Parkway Exchange. We, we, AJ and I and others have just came to the uh, decision that we thought there'd be a great platform for people to get something tangible back um, while they can support Xavier's NIL efforts. And um, we, we really want to elevate some local brands, um, some local, local shops like Wenzel. They've been incredibly supportive. Um, it's been an awesome experience, and it's just our first one, and we hope to have many more. AJ, you've uh, had a lot of experience here in, in the whiskey bourbon industry, and uh, can you just tell the fans uh, from your perspective what to expect from this? 
Yeah, this is a uh, unique release. So um, typically a private pick would be um, you would select one barrel. So we blended three barrels together, um, and uh, it came out very nice. Matt Stainwork did a very good job, and... Um, yeah, it's a very good whiskey uh, to sip on while you're watching Xavier basketball. How does all of this mix together with the name, image, and likeness initiative, the final 2% in Victory yeah. Parkway Exchange? Yeah, so everything we collect, all proceeds, are going to go straight to a Xavier Musketeer athlete. That's our end goal is to give um, Xavier and, uh, you know, the men's basketball program every resource possible. Um, obviously, NIL has become a very big focus in the space in college uh, athletics, and we want to just raise the awareness of, you know, the need for it. And if we can get some uh, nice brands and get some awesome things into people's hands that can also support that, that's our end goal for sure. Can you just talk a little bit, John, about the Victory Parkway Exchange and how that funnels into the Final 2%? Yeah, so we have been really uh, great collaborators with Final 2% and their board over there. Um, everything that we raise, all proceeds, will be directly donated over to them. And uh, they will get to, uh, you know, move that where it needs to go, but we're going to end up uh, writing a couple big checks, we hope, and uh, with every initiative, and, um, you know, we just want to keep growing it and keep supporting them and giving them, like I said, all the resources possible so we can improve and elevate Xavier. AJ, what are some of the things that Xavier fans can expect down the line after this today? Yeah, so we will be collaborating uh, with uh, some beer releases, some more bourbon releases. We'll be doing some uh, golf events and other um, you know, exciting uh, Xavier-related events with um, ex-Xavier athletes. Um, so, yeah, just stay tuned. Uh, we'll also be doing some apparel. So. so Sounds like a lot of fun things down the line. A lot of stuff. We got a full plate, but we just keep adding to it. But it's all, uh, you know, it's all, it's all for the name of, uh, you know, trying to help out everybody that needs it. Well, guys, congratulations on this effort. I know a lot of people here. It's just a fun event. People here appreciate it, and uh, excited to see what's down the line. Got a family atmosphere here from Wenzo Whiskey, joined by Matt Stainbrook. And Matt, this was really your creation, so I want you to first take us through what this is and how it came to be. Yeah, so um, I was able to uh, be a part of the pick and the blending of this. Um, me plus four other guys got to kind of sample four different uh, barrels of bourbon, one from Georgia, uh, Louisiana, Indiana, and Kentucky. Um, and then after trying them, we kind of did some lab work and put it all together, did a blind tasting of five different samples that one that we each put forward. Um, and at the end, mine was victorious. Um, so my head got pretty big as I was walking out of this building. Um, but it was a really, really cool experience. Wenzel Whiskey offers it um, to anyone. Uh, you can come do it in small batches or whole barrels. Um, so it's a really cool opportunity. For fans that are just getting accustomed to this or learning about this, what exactly went into this for you? I know you said everything just there, but everything else that, you know, has has been in the background of this to get to this point? Yeah, so it took a lot of time to kind of put it all together, uh, figure out where the proceeds were going and kind of how it could impact uh, Xavier. Obviously, the bottle's really cool in terms of the colors that they chose. The Victory Park Rate Reserve number one will be one of one. That's, that's the only kind of barrel like it you're going to have out there. Um, so it was a really cool experience with that. And then, yeah, getting the guys together who could help support this and um, figure out how it's going to impact it. We're going to taste test this here. Um, what can we expect? What are the notes, the hints, the flavors that we're going to encounter here when we start sipping? Very smooth, obviously. Um, that's what we were kind of aiming for. It's 113 proof, so it's kind of hot. The mouthfeel is really, really nice. It's by no means a dessert bourbon. Um, I'd say it's more uh, notes of oakiness, cherry, fruits on the palate. Um, I am by no means that kind of bourbon drinker. I can't tell you the exactness uh, of it, but it, it's very smooth and it's very, very delicious. And I, I do just want to let viewers know Paul was ID'd when we got in here. He he is 21 years old, um, so he's allowed to drink this. We wanted to to cross all T's and dot all the I's, but yeah, that's important to point out. We don't want anyone coming after us. I'm 27, but I look 18. <laughs> all right, are we gonna try this? Yes. Let's go. Cheers, boys. Cheers, Cheers fellas. Well done, Matt. 
I do like that. See, it, it, it feels a little bit hot in the mouth, but it's not acidic. Um, it smells very caramely. Um, th those are some of the things I get from it initially when you smell it. Do you ever think that like you'd be crafting a, a blended bourbon? No, not a chance, not a chance. Um, I, I got into bourbon about three years ago. I had a friend from Xavier actually get me into it. And ever since then, though, it's been it's been in my backseat. <laughs> I think it's cool. Like if you can tell, these bottles are autographed by Sean Miller, and this place that we're sitting in right now, Wenzel Whiskey. I was informed when we got here they just won like a national award. I think it's their weeded number two. Um, so I would encourage. We're going to try that later. We probably won't be on camera, but I would encourage people to come down check it out. I, I heard it's really good. Yeah, they're, they're huge and upcoming uh, Wenzel Whiskey. Um, I think they're actually going to a big uh, award um, show in San Francisco, probably the one of the most premier ones to, to enter theirs there. So it'd be interesting to see what happens, but yeah. I would say this is exquisite <laughs> and delightful. <laughs>
uh, analyst career. How do you feel? I feel great. Um, I, I will point out new starting lineup here for the second half for Xavier. They've decided to sit Isaac Feely. I believe he's live streaming this game on Instagram <laughs> right now. So that's a questionable call. I, I personally wanted him on the floor, but Matthew D. Simone entered into the starting lineup for the second half. We saw some of the shooting woes for Marquette there in the first half, just four for 20 from three. Can some of those shots start to fall for the Golden Eagles to separate themselves in the second half, or can Xavier get the stops they need to pull away here on senior night for the managers? Oh, look at that high-low, Matt Lally. You do not want to let him catch it that deep in the paint because he'll punish you. Xavier out to the early lead here in the second half. And for those watching unfamiliar with this training center and the Cintas Center as a whole, this is a part of the Cintas Center. So it's just down the hall from the main arena where Xavier plays their home games. You should see it on a bright, sunny day. I like to call it the sun gym because the natural light that enters this place, it's beautiful. It is. Meyer from the top of the key, halfway down and out. Offensive rebound, no. Meyer gets it back. Wong for three. That's good. And Xavier has their largest lead of the night at five. Green dot, Paul, on Paxson Wong all day, every day. Sometimes I see him, he, got a, he gets a crazy look in his eye, and you know what's going <laughs> in. Big and block. De Simone defensively. And look at the sportsmanship there from MDS. You send that ball into the shadow realm, and then you help your competitor up. That's Big East basketball right there. A lot of space. Too Wing much three. space. Lally tracks it down. Meyer in transition. Drops it off behind him. Wong. Now Meyer. Paxton likes that little slip screen. He comes up, acts like he's going to set it, goes screen, and does D. Simone on the inside. I told you he likes that real estate, Paul. And now the lead is seven for Xavier. Quickly out of the gate here in the second half. This is the start Xavier needed. Don't let these musketeers get hot. Still off the mark for Marquette. And one thing I'm sure our viewers are noticing, Max Meyer is always around the ball. Somehow, some way, that guy, he finds his way in orbit of that basketball. Looks like there's somebody uh, taking a siesta down there. Yeah, is that a model? Who is that? Not sure. Hmm. Oh, this is just pure laziness from Marquette. And passing long, I guarantee you his eyes were the size of, I don't even know. But that's a clean look, and he'll take it 100 times out of 100. Paxton Wong puts the Xavier lead into double figures, but it doesn't last long. Marquette answering, and it's down to 44-36. But Wong again, oh. and he is hot. It's out oh. to 11. My man's hotter than a black market firecracker right there, Paul. The celebration from the bench. They love it. You big on the black market for fireworks? Oh, yeah. Those are the best ones because there's a level of danger that you don't get when you go through regular channels. Naturally. Yeah. High low. Kicks it out. Didn't like it. Meyer will take the three off the back iron. Marquette with the rebound. So the first four minutes here dominated by the Musketeers. Marquette trying to get back into it. Now down by seven. And that's a former Division I basketball player just attacking the rim for Marquette right there. Golden Eagles trying to make their run. Strong to the rim. Nice help defense there. Underneath, DeSimone, oh. too much, but a foul. He calls a foul. That's one that Matthew DeSimone, he's going to want back. He finishes those more often than not. Time to check it up. Meyer at the top of the key. It's Paxton Wong over on the right wing. DeSimone, Michael Witt, Matt Lally in there for the Musketeers. 
Marquette getting their defense set there. And Xavier, very hot to start this second half. Marquette trying to chip away. They need some stops. It's important to point out, too, Marquette is undefeated this year. So this would be uh, quite the upset if Xavier could pull it off. These two met earlier in the year when Xavier was at Marquette, and I believe it was an overtime game that the Golden Eagles came out on top of. It was. De Simone on a roll for Xavier. Pretty. Look at that. Look at the touch by the big fella. The finish. Avery Brossard enters the game here for the Musketeers. Beating down low, and that's turnover. This is trending the way that Xavier needs right now, getting some of those defensive stops, hitting shots. About as an ideal start to this second half as you could have asked for for the home team. Wet dropping it off. Avery, no dice. What a pass, though, from Michael Witt right there. Avery's going to want that one back. I can guarantee it. Top of the key, three. And there's that man, Kaminsky. Great handle from Miles Kaminsky there. He's a premier ball handler. High-level athlete as well. Gritty kid. Beating in the post. High post. Around the wing. Cut off on the baseline. Oh, Wade driving Witt. the floater. Too strong. I like to see Michael Witt being aggressive, though. Man on an island here for MDS. See if we can wall on wheels this. Step back, fade away. And it'll go out of bounds. Good defense though from MDS right there. You know, when you're isolated on the low block like that, and you know there's no help coming. Yep. You have to be ready to play defense and he was right there. Some subs here for Marquette. It looks like they're going with four assistant coaches in this lineup right here. Xavier in transition. Gray Hoffman for three. No, but Kaminsky there on the follow, and the lead is 11 again. Kaminsky, right place, right time. That's hustle, baby. First team all hustle. Danger zone here for Marquette, but plenty of time left with 12 minutes to go, and that's what they needed, an easy drive. Just got to see one go through sometimes. Yeah, and that's where Xavier's help defense wasn't up to the task. Someone's got to be there. The tip out, and this will be an easy layup, and that's back-to-back -back layups for Marquette. Just like that, blink of an eye, goes from 11 to 7. Live ball turnovers, Paul. They can change a basketball game. Meyer trying to stop the bleeding, and he does. Max says, you know what? I just made a turnover. I'm going to make up for it right here with a pretty three. Backing down in the post, Avery going to wall up. But that one, the left, that an easy finish. Yeah, that's one where I'd love to see, like, B.J. Raymond walling up that, that take right there. <laughs> one of Xavier's assistant coaches. Gray Hoffman off the mark. Quick shot for the Musketeers. Would have liked to see him work second side, third side, high, low, middle third, something like that. Round and out, but an offensive rebound. Now Marquette still firing, and here come the Golden Eagles, down that's, by just five. That's a big shot. Really impressed with this young man's game. He's got it all. He can shoot it from the outside. He can put it on the deck and take it to the tin. Yeah, we've seen him all night driving, kicking, shooting. Avery trying to get out of trouble. 
Just escapes. Gertner for three. And a rebound by Marquette. They can cut it down to a one possession game here. For three. No. It's a big stop right there. Big defensive rebound as well. Marquette's got momentum right now. Xavier's got to find a way to stifle it. Uncle Mo is firmly in Marquette's corner. With less than 10 to go in this game, Xavier just trying to hang on on senior night. These senior managers going to be honored tomorrow before the game, before Xavier and Marquette tip off. Big possession here, Paul. Oh, they're doubling the low post. Look at that. I believe they call that red. You hear that red call out? It means they want help in the low post. A three for the Golden Eagles. They are within two. Down by 11 just a few minutes ago. Rattles home a three, and it's 54-52 Xavier. Gardner trying to answer. Off to the left. Marquette pushing for the tie. No. Eurostep can't get it to go though. Saving it inbounds. What a play, another Euro. That one's good and we are tied after a 12-3 run in the last three and a half minutes for Marquette. It's 54 all. And really this is a run that's been spawned by Marquette's experience. You know, I mentioned earlier in the show They've got so much Division I experience on the floor right now. Xavier's rolling with, you know, managers. And I, I think it's been honorable that, that Xavier's managers have held serve the way that they have, but sometimes experience rules the day. You're seeing that all over college basketball right now. Teams are getting older. They're getting less young. And right now, Xavier's got their hands full trying to deal with these guys, some of whom have played in the NCAA tournament before. The timeout taken, 54 all with a little over eight minutes remaining in this game. And Marquette with the save, creating the turnover, push ahead. Look at this play. Step through, left hand with some English some off English. the glass. Looking like Cam Jones on that finish right there. But <laughs> let's, let's break it down here, Paul. Tie game. You got just over eight minutes left. Xavier, they love to break games down into 10 four minute wars. So that means they got two wars left. And something to watch here is gonna be how they finish this game. And who can win these last two wars is gonna win the game. Energy is palpable in this building right now, Paul. Take a look back here at the stats. Xavier, 14 of 32 from beyond the arc. Marquette, six of 27. But inside the arc, that's where Marquette has played a little bit better. Those 13 shots made inside the arc. Rebounding edge slightly to Xavier. The turnovers both at six. And the score at 54 with 8.15 to go. Paul Fritschner, Adam Baum. Here from the Cintas Center and Klee Camp Family Training Center just down the hall from the main arena. The follow up, the put back, and Marquette has the lead at 56-54. You can just tell on that take, that's a guy who's played a lot of basketball at a high level. Matt Lally surveying the floor, DeSimone driving, Kaminsky, Uses the right, but it rolls off the front of the rim. And we just saw it earlier. Xavier has not had a lot of success in the paint and around the basket. Tough take. You get another look here. D. Simone and Meyer both trying to offer some resistance, but up and through. And it's a four-point lead. Not a lot you can do about that. Gertner, no. That goes out of bounds. Looks believe like it'll be yeah, musketeer basketball. Another debate, though, on whose ball it is. I love these manager games. 
But again, no monitor reviews. You don't have to worry about that. There are no stoppages here. No, Timeouts at a minimum. Pace at a premium. No officials either. We love that. The Simone steps back. Marquette once down by 11 here in this half. Now up by four. James Francis for three. No, but Francis has had a really, really nice game today. Really impressive player. I think you break this game down into uh, talent levels, and James Francis is right at the top. Meyer tries another three. Just nothing falling right now for Xavier. This is a Xavier team that's really kind of lived and died by the three in this game. And it kept them in it. It helped them build a lead. And they're going to need some threes to fall if they're going to win this one with six minutes to go. Xavier gets the stop they need. Now can they get the score they need? It's all about stringing them together right now. Stop, score, stop, score. Game of runs, some say. De Simone, some contact. No foul called. Play through it. The three ball. Big time. And it's a seven point edge. Kaminsky using the screen. Back it goes, De Simone. Shot clock under 10, and a turnover. Live ball turnover, too. Almost a turnover there. Musketeers attempting to call for it. The three. And it's a 10-point lead for the Golden Eagles. And that man right there, I believe he was a part of an, he won 86 games in college at Wofford. So you know he's a proven winner, and he's doing it right now against some, some of the grittiest managers Xavier has. He might want to take another one. He's a, this could be heat check territory for him. It's a 10-0 run, trying to extend it. Loses it out of bounds, and it's go time now for Xavier. Down by 10 with just over four minutes remaining. This is where you need to make a run. And here's the guy you want to start it. Paxton Wong. Hand down, man down, Paul. You give him any daylight, and he'll punish you. Gertner frustrated is. Marquette gets to drive to the rim. Witt for three. No. Xavier's rebounded well on the offensive side. And guess who it is again? Paxton Wong. Paxton Wong saying right now, I will not go quietly into that cold, dark night. He wants another chance. He wants to finish this the right way. You're watching a guy. All heart put the team on his back, and Marquette's going to take a timeout right now because they have no answer for Paxton Wong. Xavier down by just six with a little over three minutes to go in the game. Glimpse of Tyler Kolick right there. Misses a layup. Doesn't do that often. We get a look back here at these last couple of sequences. Marquette three. Put it up to seven. It's a pretty shot right there, Paul. Again, back the other way, just using the glass. A little bit of a forearm shiver there, too, creating some space. I'm going to guess Brian O'Connell would have called that a charge. D. Simone firing over to Wong, hitting a three. And then Wong again from the left wing. Knock it down. You could see it in that Marquette defender's eyes. He knew it was a lost cause the minute he was laid on that closeout. So three minutes, 30 seconds left. 
Xavier looking for one last run here. Down six. In the final war of the game. You know, I think you do have to tip your cap here to Xavier. Two possession game in that final war. And they're going against some experienced guys who have won at a high level before. And Xavier has the depth. Marquette has the experience. We're going to see how it plays out here over the last three and a half. 66-60. Marquette trying to stay undefeated on the season. Francis cut off. Francis driving and rejected. MDS says not today, Paul. Xavier with a three, could make it a one possession game. Gertner driving, trying to get the seal. Ooh, nice finish. Looks like he won an and one there too, but unfortunately we have no officials to award that. Gertner was a manager for the Musketeers, now is a grad assistant for Xavier. Honestly, just a wonderful success story. Some of these guys, they grind as managers for years, but outside the spotlight and Marquette, or Mark Gertner has been rewarded for that grind with a spot on Xavier's staff as a graduate assistant coach. Still a four point game. Yeah. Now Tough a take. six point game, that's a big swing. The missed layup on one end for Xavier. Marquette converts on their end. And it's a six point lead. We'll stop it here. Catch your breath. Get your bearings. Xavier needs a good possession right here. Gertner. Oh, he doesn't hear that. That's lack of communication right there, Paul. They need to be calling out, letting him know. He can't see what's coming behind him right there. Swing through, step back. This could be a dagger, and it's banked in for three. The lead is nine, and that might do it for Marquette. How about that, Paul? That's a big-time shot right there in a big spot, and sometimes the glass gives. Behind the back, Wong stepping back. Doesn't take the three, instead finds Michael Witt. Xavier, good not little, done yet. Good little give and go there, Paul. Still plenty of time for Xavier. He gets some stops here. Gotta lock it down underneath, but an easy layup. The lead is nine with 70 seconds to go. De Simone strong to the rim. I think Calls we're gonna a have foul. a foul there. Just running out of time here for the Xavier Musketeers. But what a game we've gotten to see here tonight, Paul. We have high level, entertaining, back and forth. Wit for three, no. Marquette the rebound, and it looks like it's going to be Marquette's day. Golden Eagles, less than a minute from remaining undefeated on the season. Came in here to a hostile environment. And you got to give them a lot of credit. They handled it well. And we heard Zach Freeman at halftime. Xavier's path to winning this game came down to getting stops on defense. And they just didn't do that well enough to walk away here with a victory. The three ball. No, Michael Witt. Xavier, one last chance here. Meyer for three. Off the mark. Now Wong for three. Marquette gets the rebound, and that will do it. Marquette stays undefeated on the season, and they win this one by a final score of 73-64. to 64. Yeah, Paul, the 11-point uh, the lead in the second half, it, it wasn't enough. Xavier couldn't hold on to it. Marquette went out there, and they took it away. Take a look here at the final box, uh, the team comparison. Xavier 11 for 30 from inside the arc, hit 16 threes though in this game. Xavier out rebounding Marquette by one. The turnovers, eight turnovers for both sides. Adam, it was great to broadcast this game with you. It was a lot of fun to put a spotlight on the managers, some people that 
maybe don't get the recognition that they need, but are so vital to helping a Division One program, not just in basketball, in any sport. The managers are such a critical piece of the puzzle for Division One athletics. And here in men's basketball, we had the opportunity to give them some shine here in this game. It was a lot of fun. They're the backbone, Paul. You know, they do the, they do the dirty work, the stuff that not many other people are willing or want to do. And I love coming to these manager games. I love watching them compete. This is their time to shine. And the fact that you and I could sit here together drinking about a dozen beers <laughs> <laughs> and broadcast this game, what a thrill. If you want to hear more about the Xavier managers, I did mention this earlier in the game, but if you want to hear more, we did interview or Sean Miller, the head coach of the Musketeers, did interview the Xavier managers, the seniors, had him on the podcast. So you can go back on the Sean Miller podcast YouTube page and listen to the interviews with the four senior managers uh, that he had a chance to sit down and talk with just to get an idea of who they are, what their roles and responsibilities are day to day. But Adam, signing off. It's great to be here with you. You too, Paul. Thanks for watching, everybody. For more, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. You follow us at Sean Miller Pod on all our social media channels, and we'll talk to you next time on the Sean Miller Podcast.